Bonjour, bonsoir, dear friends, and welcome to JCB Live. Bienvenue. We're going to be with an exciting explorer tonight, dear friends. We're going all the way to the fabulous Quebecois, the land of the best of what America and France has to offer. And this is our wonderful friend, Danielle Fox. He's a writer, a professional photographer, and a philosopher in many ways. He has phenomenal principles and values that he's going to convey. He's going to show us his latest book. Dear friends, he loves wine and Napa Valley. He's an incredible artist. Sell a lot of his beautiful work around the world in magnificent homes. And he's a great guy. Ladies, just to let you know, he's sexy, but he just got married. So you're going to have to wait a few more years. Here we are. <laughs> GC, what a pleasure to be here with you. As opposed to How being in Napa. Doing good. <laughs> well, Excellent. We miss, we miss you. Cheers. I'm looking at you right in the eyes, thinking of you in the crystal the cool yes. frozen crystal of the Antarctica. Here we are. Cheers. Santé. Mm. Santé. Really so, nice. yeah. Daniel, how does it feel to be married? Um, it feels like finding a life partner and that can compensate for your shortcomings and makes you a better person. Ultimately, that's I think if you can find a person that you feel that you grow even when you're not in your best places, that's the kind of partner that you want to find. So it's well, uh, beautifully said. So Daniel, <laughs> tell us. I love how you proposed. Yes, you saw I did. Pictures of it. The moment it happened, you were the kindest, and I was frozen of excitement. So share with our friends how you did it, because I don't think many people did it that way. No, it's, I took my wife, well, first of all, I wanted things to be ours. I didn't want our wedding to be taken, taken over by many people. So I basically um, discovered this ice cave in the back country uh, by Whistler, and we got into a helicopter and we did it in an ice cave. And her dress was just happened to be so magical. And there was this place to be on. And just to be honest, I knew that this place would disappear. It's an ice cave. It's in the glacier and it's dynamic and it's ch always changing. And for me, it was the idea of having a place that would be ours and ours only that no one could ever go back and do their own thing uh, after. So now the, I the cave is gone. Hey, I suspect. Danielle, you did it there that way, dropped by an helicopter so you know she could not run away, and she was <laughs> captured within the ice. And Absolutely. she had to say yes. She had to say yes. She could not she could not get away from it. But yes, she was super happy. Everything worked out amazingly. And um and it's our and in our memories. Many, and they had many children thereafter. How beautiful. <laughs> this is like a, a, a fairy tale. Yeah, well, fairy tales. You know, you know, like like me, there are no fairy tales. There are good stories and you have to work hard at it. And, you know, this is this is what defines relationships and marriage. Wow. You are so philosophical. I love <laughs> it. So, Danielle, uh, yeah. I would love for you to share how one becomes an explorer. Because what you do is so cool. And obviously you have a book you're going to show us to naturally showcase what you do. But explain to our friends what you do really as a solo wildness explorer. So for the past, I don't know. I mean, I grew up, I grew up spending a lot of time in nature, in the wilderness. And at some point... I thought that this life, the life that I wanted to do was a life for the, a childish life. You know, you, you grew up with dreams and, 
ideas and then at one point you're reminded that you have to get serious and you have to be professional so you get into business and I tried to do it into the corporate world I ended up living in New York City for seven years and I could always prove to myself that I could get what I wanted or do what I wanted to do but I was never really satisfied so to make a long story short I found myself in a place and at a time where I had to decide how I wanted to my next 15 years, the rest of my life to be defined. And this is when I dis I went to Argentina. I sold everything, went to Argentina and started to do what I do now, which is writing stories, writing stories and capturing the journey of us, the human species, but using nature as a framework for personal transformation. I use, I use nature as this giant umbrella above us that has values and principles that we can apply to our lives and try to enjoy the ride of life rather than swim against the current. And it's, you know, I do believe wow. that we're all, I think that we're all explorers in our own ways because we're, in our own ways, we're pushing the boundaries of what is comfortable and what is not comfortable. And we're all, and this crisis, you know, has been, a journey of exploration for everyone because we've all been put outside of our comfort zone. And I make a big difference between adventure and exploration. Adventure is really you seek a, a thrill, but exploration, you seek to transform yourself by experiencing things that are outside of your control, things that are outside of your comfort zone. And I I try to help people in, in their journey of transformation by bringing nature and the lessons um, in their journey. Wow. Powerful. So I got to go there. Always, what is the always drinking a good glass of wine though. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have another glass after that beautiful you know, outline. What is to you and for you personally, Danielle, the best gift that nature offered to you? Resiliency. It's, mm -hmm. it's life, life always figures a way forward. And there's this powerful drive that push everything forward. And whether it's good and whether it's bad, nature doesn't make a judgment about that. You know, whether a volcano erupts and blankets the entire ground of lava, there's no one in that equation that goes, oh, this is bad, this is good. It's whatever is done afterward with it that defines, you know, if it was positive or negative. Yeah. Life, life is defined by those moments, those crises, those challenges, those failures, and they are shaped by the values and principles that you that you're born with or that you learn, and you become there's a richness that is acquired because of that, then you become, you, you can choose to become better and grow. And there are these themes in nature of transformation and renewal and rhythm. And nowhere in nature is the idea that these transformations are easy. They're challenging. They're meant to be challenge, uh, challenging because this is where the, the, the process of transformation happens. But what nature constantly gives you over and over and over again is that there's always a way forward. You know, even if you go on a lava field, when you think it's the most desolate place where no one could live and no life could grow, there's always a seed somewhere that's going to appear out of nowhere. Yeah. So resiliency and just this idea that you can shape your future, I mean, uh, you know, big lessons from nature. Oh, I love it. I'm, I'm in full agreement with you as my best friend. Growing up as a young child in the middle of the vineyards of Burgundy, my best friend was Mother Nature, so I resonate entirely yeah. with what you've said. Now, Danielle, I'm going to have a toast for you, but why don't you tell us what you think about this JCB21, this sparkling wine, because I know you love wine, you love Burgundy, yes. and I'm going to my, ask my, you... My, my wife might tell you that I might that I like I like wines a little bit too much because for me I'm like the Europeans. It's a bottle of wine for dinner. <laughs> and, do you, and as you taste this, do you take wine on your solo wilderness 
outings? It's a little bit complicated to bring alcohol um, on, but because of the weight. But I do, I do try to bring um, at least one so that I can, like, one, my first night or my second night. And when I come back, there's always, you know, that's my first thing that I do. I have a glass <laughs> of something. Yeah. But. Oh, what a soft, <laughs> beautiful opening. Well, we love it. You were talking about eruption, volcano, yes. lava going all around. This is your form of lava. There, there we go. Yes. Um, I love, so, I love also how these these things that we take for granted you know today you know we 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 think of bubbles or sparkling or even wine that this is like this end product but the reality of this is these are processes that have gone through so many challenges and adaptations and and, you know, even champagne, the idea that like champagne really was kind of a mistake from the beginning. And now we embrace it for what it is. That for me, again, yeah. like these, these are lessons of resiliency and going along with what, you know, nature. So let me have... That's right. So why don't you describe this mm. wine as if you were in the wilderness? And you would see around you those frozen crystals, those beautiful images of galactic and stalactic and, you know, all the things that you discover in the wild coldness of the north. I would say that the, um, I love that the bubbles is subtle and it's this kind of, it's a nice, comfortable like you you it's a it's a relationship that you want to like it doesn't uh, attack you from the beginning it would like it pulls you in in the same way that like an ice cave it's gonna show you just 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 an entrance that is not really obvious and then suddenly it um there's so there's so much more i i feel that this conversation is going to places <laughs> I love it. Sitting, <laughs> sitting on this, sitting in an ice cave, looking at the crystal. It's a perfect match. Hey, dress, dress or naked? Because it would be a nice that image reinterpreted, where you yeah. sit on an ice cube naked as a clear carved piece of ice. Yes. Well. For, for the occasion of sitting on ice, fully, fully dressed, of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for this great description. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> so, Daniel, yes. you had uh, many awakening in your life. I know that. Yeah. yeah. One specifically, and I think we're all looking for enlightenment, awakenings, you know, the wah moment that allows us to become who we wish we can become, all of that. So do you want to share that unique time for you and all of us can be inspired by it? Gosh, there's been, there's been several milestones in my journey from, from the, the, um, the days where I decided to really change my path and not become like my father. For me, that was a big motivational force, you know, to really this ah moment but there is there is a moment and it actually um I, I wrote about it a little bit and not not a lot of people know know about this so it's kind of a premiere not a full premiere but this is a premiere between between you and i and it Absolutely. happened in paris it happened in paris um uh, i was uh, i was in my early 30s and you know i thought that I had everything under control and that was prior to when I decided to go to, you know, to go back to my source and my roots and become a, a solo wilderness explorer into the wilderness. And I was in Paris and I was so running, you doing, the yeah. Yeah, you went from the nightclub and the darkness and the intensity of Paris to the wellness. 
Well, not necessarily the nightclubs, but I was I was doing my morning jog, my morning run, and I was around by Le Louvre in the Jardin de, de Le Louvre in the interior court. And I suddenly, out of nowhere, I had this sudden rise of anxiety. I had never had anxiety in my life. I was always full in control of my emotions. And I've always thought that anxiety was for the weaker, the weak people. That it was like something that people, you know, can't control. And But here I am in the middle of Paris at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I have this uncontrollable rise of something that is just beyond me. And I don't know if you remember the movie, The Matrix, where like Neo touches the mirror and he has like the mirror kind of crawling over. I felt exactly like this. And I suddenly had this realization that my life was doomed, that there was no end to it. And I went back to my place. And that night I really had a powerful dream. I had this dream of being on, on a field it was a battlefield and it was like kind of silence. The Lord of the Rings with like ogre, like monsters as far as you can see. And the last scene in the movie was like this camera just like goes above yeah. me and pulls up and shows us like enemies as far as you can see. But there was this inner voice that says, don't worry, this is not the end. Just gather your, your strength and everything will be fine. When I woke wow. up, I knew exactly. When I woke up, I knew exactly what to do, and I spent a week or ten days, I think, just drinking gallons of chamomile tea and just meditating and just like taking walks in Paris. And after ten days, I woke up, and I had this sense of clarity that I had never had in my life. It was kind of it was the spring back from the death, and. I knew from that moment that I would never experience anxiety again in my life. And for me, the big lesson was that when we're faced with those moments of, gosh, this is like, this is awful. We have a strength that inside of us that can take us through these moments and the upshoot in the end, if we decide to go through the trial, is so powerful that we it's so worth it but we have to go through we it's not about denying or trying to avoid it but really to go through and for me that was kind of the, so, the beginning of that journey well thank you for sharing what a great story now you say to go through the trial so yep. one side of your brain was asking the question most of the time the tough one that we don't want to answer honestly but as you were alone you said, I'm going to face it. I'm going to try to resolve with it. Is it what happened? Yeah. And that's a, that's a bit, a big conversation. And with some of the, the current philosophers that, that we have right now, you know, one of them is Sam Harris, who doesn't believe that, you know, we have free will. I think that the, we have, we have our biological reality that makes us react, that makes us scare, you know, run or scream. And, but we also have the capacity to recognize that. And if we're surrounded by people who can help us, if we've been given the help, if we're given, if we've been given the capacity to talk about it and the tools, then we have the power to change that, that path. And, but th that is not as easy as just like, well, now because you know it, then you should be able to know it, uh, to do it. The, your, your network, the people, the community around you is going to be a, like a, a, a great factor as whether you go down that path of transformation or not. But it's, we, we have, this is what I think makes us really human exceptional, is really that capacity to change the path of the biological default way that, 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 you know, usually is presented to us and go and say, wait, hold on for a second. Yes, I can, I can scream, but maybe it's not in the best of my intention. Maybe there's a better way around it. Wow. 
very, very deep, mon ami. Incroyable. It's, it's, it's the alcohol that speaks. It's only, it's words of wisdom that come out of the bottle. I'm just a, I'm just a messenger. Well, you're a great messenger. So I suggest now, Daniel, we change gears and we move to yep. the 49, the other glass of wine, because this yep. uh, bottle of wine really represents who you are. It was made for and in honor of the gold rush in 1849, 1848, hence the number 49. It's all about being golden, enterprising, and pay tribute to that time of history of California. Yeah. So on that note, as you wrote your fantastic book, and I'm excited yeah. that people are going to be able to purchase it, we have a lot of things in common, including the rules that we define ourselves. So yeah. Daniel Fox, dear friends, has defined in his book the Fox rules, not the Fox, Fox rules. news, the Fox rules. The so Fox rules. would you be... Would you be so kind as I cheer to you for that? Because I love your rules and I want to follow them religiously too. Why don't you walk us through those four rules? And dear friends, you'll find that in Danielle's book, but you may want to write it down because they're great advice. Feel the Wild, available at Amazon and local stores, I'm sure. Oh, on my website. We have, uh, we have it available here at Raymond Vineyards and JCB. And feel the while there's a little bit of texture of a page. And that's your mm -hmm. way to feel Daniel Fox himself. Yes. The, the, the <laughs> rules are, are, really, are really about bringing down the essence of what nature, what you can find in nature. And so the first one is embrace disruptions. Nature is by definition an endless series of disruptions, whether it's the morning, the change of the night, the morning, the rain, the clouds, the, the growth, the soils, everything is just disruptions over and over and over again. So embrace disruptions. That's what makes life rich. You know, no one wants to eat something that is bland. What makes a dish truly exciting is the spices is the combination of these different flavors so yep. disruptions is really the, the the beauty of life and then so you follow that with becoming resilient and yep. becoming resilient is basically having the mindset to go with those disruptions i love that the japanese have this um this expression te no uchi and it's the perfect sword grip and it's a grip that is hard enough so that you can stop a powerful blow, but it's soft enough so that you can be agile with it. Ooh. So you want to be, you want to have enough tension so that you don't fall, but you don't want to be too stiff so that you break, you know, like a tree that moves with the wind. But at the same time, if it was too stiff, then, you know, then it would break. So well, that represents I, perfectly your personality, I think. Yep, absolutely. So embrace disruptions, become resilient, nurture growth. And that for me is one of the things that have been missing into one of the conservation narrative is growth is the natural process of life. You know, we, from every cell to a seed, to a tree, to the planet, to the universe, it starts in one thing and then it devolves into something else. And then there's this expansion, this growth. Now you can have a linear growth. You can grow by burning the, the, the candle from both ends, or you can have more of a holistic growth, organic growth that considers, you know, that considers everything that is around and you want to grow, bring everyone around, you know, with you as opposed to just this like individualistic growth. So nurture growth is really important. And then after that, the final one is go a flow with the rhythm. Yeah. Nature, nature is this constant movement between two poles, between day, between nights, between, you know, a, a positive charge and a negative charge. The fact yeah. that on the earth, life is this mix of, you know, we have a rhythm of the season, the rhythm of the days, the rhythm 
there's so many rhythms that are going on and it's really this this thing that constantly mixes these ingredients and create life and whatever made you great today will be a challenge tomorrow so understand that there's this on constant endless movement and that is the source of growth and evolution but these four if you understand these four rules of of nature disruptions becoming resilient growth and rhythm then nothing is going to surprise you it doesn't doesn't it doesn't mean that life is going to be rosy and a walk in the park that's not that's not what it means it means that you just have you understand the process and you have the tools so that you don't get defined by these low points that you know that they're just temporary it's like looking at the clouds you know passing over you know that the storm is not going to be there forever there will be a day tomorrow or a day after where it's blue sky or it's not but these are just temporary and you don't get all bugged down for the rest of your life because of one rainy day you know that there's you know a sunny day coming so yeah that's the the kind of the overall lesson of those rules well that's phenomenal so how do you eventually hold yourself accountable to those rules i make them public and then after that i surround myself by people to remind me of them that's <laughs> <laughs> well that's very cool that's a great it's, way to do it i commend you for that well it's yeah i think that it none of us none of us can expect to go through life like a mighty night you know with just having all the answers and being able to do the right thing every single day i think that you know sometimes you know we do get angry we do get annoyed and there's plenty there's been plenty of those times you know and recently but like a good ceo or a good leader if you surround yourself by people that can that can remind you what you stand for and this is really the 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 worth of a community i mean i was i was uh, watching the other day on uh, on netflix kevin hart on one of his specials um about his downfall and you realize yeah. how how important all the people that he have that he has around him those are the people that make sure that he stand in line and in fact when he got out of line is because his support network was not there so it's the people around me and that that I choose that are really important wow i love that i think it's a great way to do it well talking about people this is a living organism this is a product of nature this is your moment of wildness that you could describe i yep. want to hear what you're thinking of number 49 which happens to be one of my favorite wine we make in the russian river and the symbol of what i really present to the world as a great phenomenal chardonnay from the russian river it's like a mouthful of gold i feel like i'm just biting on a on a gold <laughs> um it's it's a really smooth russian river chardonnay and i definitely i mean you have it's a you know it's a bold statement and i think when you say this like it's one of your favorite is i can definitely taste your personality in that wine so it's um, Thank you. yes so talking about wildness you've created recently an amazing new evolution of your business yeah please describe to us the virtual world that you've created and how people can follow you and be engaged in all the great things you're doing into so many ways it's um well the part of the 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 new addition a part of the pivots that i've done with covid i mean for me before there was really this element of like i need to take people to the wilderness because there's there's an element there's a richness into that process of going to a, a place but we live in a time first of all there's there's a there's a where the point where technology has given us opportunities that are just like beyond what we could you know think of and in the VR world now 
we can create experiences to people who would never have the capacity to visit these places. And we do it in the VR world, either, you know, with the sound and with these headsets. But you can think of like moving into the future where cars are going to be, the inside of a car is going to be redefined and you can step into a car and you can push a finger and then you can have all the interior be transformed into a forest or being on the ocean yeah. and where you, you can totally relax. Or the idea of going to the doctor and instead of feeling stressful about being at the doctor, you put the headset on and then suddenly you're, you know, you're by, you're sitting by the rolling waves of a really calm, sunny coast day. So that's right. Creating these, creating these immersive experiences. It's really what I'm going to be moving forward. Uh, these immersive nature experiences and where we want to kind of create one of the largest banks of these nature um, places that people can experience from either the, the, their houses or at, can be used at school for children who would never have access to, to the wilderness. Or, you know, if you're at the office and you want to take a 15 minute kind of meditation or, or pause, then you can put this on or you can go into a room that's been transformed into a video room and have this moment of total disconnect. And it feels real. It really feels real. It's three dimensional and it's surround and you have the sound. And the, so that is um, a lot of my, my work now that I'm doing. I'm in love with it. And I think we should do one together in one of our room at the winery on four white walls with headsets. Yeah. And like I am here at the JCB Lounge in San Lina with the wines in front of us, but nobody necessarily comments on the wine orally in present tense as a physical presence, but it all goes through the sound system. So shall we do it? Yes. I, I, experiencing what wine is from, the, from the, the grape, from having this sense of like I'm in the vineyard and I can feel these different elements that are coming together, the scent, the smell. I mean, there's so, I love, there's, you know, at Ramon, you have the, the hallway and you can, you can smell these different, the, the, the different things. This is the viscerality of life that now we can have a, a capacity, the opportunity to create these experiences that really mix all these ingredients and remind people that these are a product connected to an environment and that the coldness of the night, the, the humidity of the morning, the wind, the sound, yes. all these elements come and find their way and shape these, these liquids that are just really our connection to, to the earth. I love it. So let's really, and do you see friends, how we decide to do something potentially together? Let's yeah. uh, take another time to discuss it because I love what the Lumière Institute has done in Paris with yeah. those giant exhibition of artists on five walls, meaning the ceiling and the four walls around the room yeah. or more, and the ground sometimes, and you walk towards and through the certain areas of lavender, artificially mm. displayed, of course, through screens and and projectors and I'd love to do this idea so maybe we we consult with each other and discuss it yeah I cheers to that I don't know cheers which one you that. want me to cheers but and we yes gotta go red now. we gotta go red because we gotta go to number six Ooh, to the flirtatious yeah. timeless and of course one of the most sultry wine we've ever made Pinot Noir because you love Pinot don't you? Yes. Yes. Why do you love I, so much? I have to share with you an experience that I, it only happened to me once in my life. And I was tasting a wine. It was a Syrah um, from France. Uh -huh. and, I, and I tasted it. And I had this, this intense visualization of being in the cabin in the woods with a lot of game birds, a lot of games on, on the wall, game birds, you know, rabbits. And I mean, the terroir, 
the really the this 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 energy of the terroir and it was so vivid and like i had this vivid imagery of being in that place and i've never experienced that before after uh, not before but after it's um i don't i can't i can't tell i can't remind i can't tell you what the wine was i just know that it was a syrah that it was kind of spicy and you know the tannins were strong um but yeah that was uh, my most memorable experience with the wine well tell us would you replace it with this wine and if yes why mm. 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 The hints of hints of spices and chocolate to love it mm, yeah this one this one is not as bold as the chardonnay in fact this It's not as it's not as your typical Pinot from America. It's like it has the backbone that you find often in the um, in the European ones. I love it. Oh, thank That's you. A... So, uh, hmm. give us uh, a little bit of uh, of an outline of your latest fine art collection, because you've created those insane, fabulous inviting images and photography and art pieces that are extraordinary. So tell us a little more about this because I think it's very impressive, specifically for me, the ice crystal, which I find yes. absolutely gorgeous. I, this is one that was one of my, there's always surprises at every expedition that I do. I go to, you know, with an intent and And then some magic happens and then suddenly I'm pulled into a place where I go, wow. In this case, I was for two weeks, I was on a glacier and I wanted to capture some uh, winter landscape up in the mountains. But there was an ice cave nearby and I managed to get into the ice cave. And in fact, I have a, a video online on YouTube and it's just a 360 tour Like I'm in the cave and you got a 360 camera and you can move around and you can look at, at, the, wow. at the surroundings. But on the ceiling of that ice cave, because of the cold air that would come, the difference of, of temperature between the outside and, and the inside, there were these magical, absolutely magical uh, ice crystals that were forming on the ceiling. They were about this big each. And it was so... It's so out of context, like because we look at nature and we see irrigate, like we see a kind of certain chaos. Things are not sharp, and you know, you look at the trees and it's not a straight line. You look at the clouds and it's all bubbly. You look at the grass and it's kind of messy. But you look at these ice crystals and you really feel like you're going down the rabbit hole of computer and the matrix and everything is like, it's like going down into like squares yeah. and squares and squares. And you look at the pictures, the, these pictures that I took are always, you don't know exactly what you're looking at until you really start to look at it. And that for me, this yeah. is most of, most of the people, a lot of people look at my work and say, I didn't know if it was a painting or if it was a photograph. And for me, that's the best compliment wow. because that is, that is the, the idea of, I want to create a place where your brain recognizes certain elements, but then it has to, you have to put yourself into it. You have to start to have a dialogue with the image and then it becomes a relationship between you and the art as opposed to just like, Oh, okay, this is a, a sunset or this is uh, snow it's more than that it's like wait i think it i think i know oh my god this is what oh this is amazing and that new series that i did the vice crystals they're all like that you look at it and you have no idea what you're looking at until you start to get close and they're all like large prints they're like 54 by 80 inches and they're they all have a different feeling to it but There have these shapes that are really interesting and this movement. And, and they're so part can... of your power of nature. And they're part of your power of nature presentation, right? Yeah, the power of nature 
presentation on on online is really kind of the the essence of all the teachings that I that I promote through my work. That's amazing. So now, Danielle, we're going to show a, a few pictures of obviously yes. those incredible crystals as an example. But what is after all those great achievements? What is your next dream? I have to <laughs> I have this question. I knew <laughs> you, I knew you would give me this question. I. And so I have little dreams. I love that question. I have so many I have, dreams, I don't know which one to answer. I have small dreams. I have big dreams. I have obviously dreams of places to go, whether it's Iceland, the Faroe Islands, all these extreme remote islands yep. around Antarctica and all this. But for me, the, the biggest dream that I have in my life, and unfortunately, it's a dream that it will only find out um, at the end of my days if I if I have it or not is realizing that I've played a part in making the world a better place and wow. that is my that is my dream but I don't think that you can know if that dream has been fulfilled until that very end moment when you can look back and realize that you you've done everything that you can to the people to yourself and to the people around you hoping to leave a, you know leave the place in a better you know in a better way that you that you that you came and wow. it's like it's like you know the in the japanese philosophy a master is never a master you always are learning until yes. until you have no more to learn because you're going somewhere else and that is the philosophy that I have about about that dream is that I, I don't want to get to a place where I think that I've done everything until I'm ready for a next a, a next time and then I can I can let the world be be the judge on and and be worthy of receiving that dream it's not going to be up to me it's going to be to the world deciding if you know if I'm worthy of that dream Ooh, inspiring dreams. I love it. So now... That's, when, that's the dream Danielle. when I start drinking red. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have a last toast, and I would love for you, on this last question to you, after this amazing time together tonight, to share with our friends your message to all of us from Daniel Fox himself, who's defined rules, who's defined a new world of nature, who speaks with nature, who photographs nature, who does so many great things. What would be your message to all of us as you were looking like the god or the devil with all the flames behind you? I loved it. Don't, don't, be, af I, don't be afraid of the dark places. Um, and... and the human species is not a bad species. We are an amazing species who have the capacity to rise when the shit hits the fan. This is what we do. We break things, we fix things, we tell each other that it's how to how to get through. This is what makes us amazing. It's a life is a messy process and there's a beauty in it. And there's a beauty in that disruption, that destruction, that creation. But if we can believe in ourselves and choose on what to focus on, there's nothing that we cannot achieve and there's no places that we cannot get and there's no challenges that we cannot conquer or innovate our way out from. That said, it doesn't mean that there is this utopian place that we can get to where everything is going to be you know a paradise that will never happen but the river of life continues and if we and if we trust ourselves to develop the tools to deal with whatever is thrown at us then we'll enjoy that ride and every time that we are that we capsize and fall over and you know find ourselves in the water we'll 
we won't panic. We'll know that we're capable of figuring out a way up, taking a deep breath, get back into the boat and learning and then, you know, off to the next, you know, next, um, next step. So don't be afraid. Know that there's going to be hard times, but we all have the tools to, we can, we can find the tools to get through and grow from that. I adore it. Danielle, thank you immensely. What a positive message. I embrace it, as you know, with nurturing glow, growth and flowing with rhythm. I'm part of your yeah. rules now. So, Danielle, we appreciate so much your presence with us tonight. We wish you the best. We cannot wait for the next book, for the art pieces, for our discussion on the artwork in our rooms. Yeah. And uh, we wish you happy, joyful, and enlightening explorations. And I can't wait to come down to Napa again because this is a place we go every year, except, you know, except this hasn't been, we all know why. Well, soon but, again. Uh, soon. We'll, we'll be there right. soon. Cheers. Cheers. Thank cheers, you, cheers. Danielle.